All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Fan Take. We're at episode 10. We're officially episode 10. You should know the crew by now. I'm Cam. That's Tweety. And um, right now it is Wednesday night. Um, the Thunder and, and the Pelicans game is, is coming to the close. Um, obviously, the, the Thunder's taking a sizable lead over the, uh, the Pelicans. So it's... Yeah, so uh, Thunder take take on the, the the W against the Pelicans, one twenty four to ninety two. OKC leads uh, two to zero. So for this episode, we're just gonna be going through um, uh, not all, but most of all the the series so far um, in the playoffs. Um, so might as well start with with uh, the games tonight. Um, the Thunder taking the two zero lead over the Pelicans as I've already said, what do you think about um, the series with the with the um, Thunder and the Pelicans? Uh, I'm a Thunder fan, so it's kind of hard to say this, but we're getting a lot of calls that we probably shouldn't get against the Pelicans. And I don't think we need them because, you know, we still blow them out, but we're getting a lot of, you know, they're, they're getting a lot of bad calls. So, I mean, the Pelicans playing handicapped already without your best player, and not getting the calls against you, I mean, I guess that's when you play against the number one seed. You got to go, like, to them. Like, it's not really good anyway. So, I mean, you should expect this, but, you know, the Pelicans are kind of being cheated. You know? And that's coming from an OKC fan. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've been watching the games. I, I really personally haven't felt, you know, um, um, any differences with officiating. But, I mean, the Pelicans, they just – they not up to stuff with the um the Thunder. The first game was a lot more competitive. Um, I think they with with the Thunder being such a young team, they was able to to, to catch them a little bit off guard. Obviously, a lot of guys on the Pelicans have uh gone to the playoffs a couple of times, had playing experience and things of that nature. So I think it was able to keep a good balanced first game going. Um one thing I like that that the Pelicans did the first game was that they was uh beating on Chet down low. Um, pause, <laughs> you know, shit down low, uh, with uh, big valid and I didn't see a lot of that this game. Uh, I think, uh, in game two, the Pelicans tried to fight fire with fire, I tried to beat them on the perimeter in the same fashion that the Thunder play, and it just, it just, you know, up to, uh, up to, up to standard with the. With the Thunder, um, the Thunder just much more talented. They got much more pieces than the Pelicans have. Um, obviously, Brandon Ingram has, has been coming off injury, and he's been playing okay. But um, he 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 doesn't. He's not the answer. T.J. McCullough been playing okay, but he's not the answer. Um, Zion obviously has been missing the action. So um, yeah, I, I I think this is 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 <laughs> the series is going to wrap up with. With the Thunder um taking it home. Um, the next series we're gonna be talking about is the Los Angeles Clippers versus the Dallas Mavericks. Um the series is now tied one to one. Um the Clippers took the first game at home. Um, then the Mavericks took the se- second game in uh Crystal.com Arena. What do you think about the series with the Clippers and the Mavs uh, so far? I haven't got a chance to tune into the series yet. I plan on tuning in for game three. Um, it seems like a very competitive series, man. And then in that first game, Luca and Kyrie both had 30 points. And they lost the game. But in the second game, Luca only had 20. And, I mean, nah, Luca had 30 and Kyrie only had 20. And they won the game. So, I mean, I guess it's just showing that, you know, they can win without, the, they, they can win without both of them having to put up 30. But it's going to be very hard. And the Clippers just wasn't clicking the second game from what I'm seeing from stat lines and field goal percentages and everything. Westbrook hasn't been too existing in this playoff series. He was in the first game. He was okay. But, you know, he got to go back to playing like he was in that, that little regular season stretch, you know, because this is the playoffs and you're Russell Westbrook. You have to be that spark for them. And, you know, he didn't spark for them that second game, and that's what killed them. And Luka just being Luka, man, the MVP. Um, yeah, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's been a very competitive series. The Clippers and the Mavericks always 
uh, final sales and playoff situations against each other. It's always a good uh, entertaining series. Um, the first game, the Mavericks, uh, the two honchos, they played well, but I think the Clippers was able to, you know, <coughs> with their big four, they was able to um, play pretty good cohesively. And as you said, in the second game, they was able to do that. Uh, I know in the second game, Kawhi had 15, Paul George had 22, uh, Harden had 22. So, I mean, for me, I, I kind of give the edge to the Mavericks as far as the series as a whole, just because, okay, you going back home to Dallas, uh, series tied one to one. So you have home, home court advantage currently. And I just don't, I just don't think that the, the Clippers big four can play cohesively enough to um, win a champ. Well, first win a championship. Um, if they win this series, I wouldn't be surprised, but I just don't think they have the the cohesiveness with their big four to um, be able to make it to the West Coast finals or um, the finals, let alone win a championship. Um, you got a, a a a big four that all you no know, four guys need the ball. Um, it's not a situation like looking at the Warriors where you have um, Steph, Clay, KD that can all play off the ball. Um, Harden needs the ball if he's going to be uh, uh, effective. Westbrook needs the ball if he's going to be effective. Uh, Paul George needs the ball if he's going to be effective, and Kawhi needs the ball if he's going to be effective. And um, the only guy that can really play off the ball in that uh, in that group is Paul George. But it's going to be hard to get him rolling when you're trying to get Kawhi rolling as well. He's a wing. And then, you know, we already seen the, the guard play dynamic with Harden and Westbrook when they on the court at the same time in Houston. And it's just, it just doesn't gel right. And, you know, they have it up their ups and downs this season uh, as far as on-court play. And for me – I just I, I I think the Mavericks, um, with their more solid duo of Kyrie and Luca, with their supporting overall cast, um, is going to be able to, to beat the Clippers uh, in six games. But uh, what do you think about that? I mean, I don't I don't, I don't, I don't know. I kind of I, I had the Mavs. I had the Mavs to start the series, but after seeing it and then seeing how they match up, the Clippers have a they kind of got more pieces than the Mavs, man. If if Harden do, do what he did the first game and go back to Houston Harden, he went back to Houston Harden, man. If he goes back to Houston Harden four times, they win those four games and they win the series. You got to stop Harden because if Harden can get back out of his shell, he, the NBA put him in and just play like a shooting guard Harden and stop trying to pass the ball and let Westbrook run the offense, I, I I just don't think it's gonna work because you it's not like you're in a situation in Houston where it's hard in the hills. You know what I'm saying? You have you know superstars around them. You know, obviously, uh, Westbrook is a former MVP. Kawhi is a two time Finals MVP. Uh, Paul George used to be an MVP um, uh, contender. He he uh, ended one season third in MVP voting. So it's not. Is hard and, and every, everybody else trying to chip in. You actually have other stars behind, beside them, and they're going to have to contribute something if you plan on um, making anywhere in the playoffs. I just feel like because the Mavericks have two uh, uh, designated stars that's going to be carrying the load, and they have more well-rounded group of uh, role players that know their role. I just think the Mavericks have a um, a step ahead as far as in this series against the Clippers. Going to the next series, we got the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Sun, the Phoenix Suns. Um, the Timberwolves are leading the series 2 nothing against the Suns. Uh, game three is going to go back to uh, – well, not back because their first time going to Phoenix, but uh, first two games, uh, Minnesota's home court, they uh, go up 2-0 going to Phoenix now. What do you think about the series so far? I'm pissed, man. Because it's KD, man. And the Timberwolves, they, they're a great defensive squad. They're a great squad. They're deep. But, bro, with Booker, 
Bill and Durant, you shouldn't be struggling to score against them. And with Allen having the best three point field goal percentage in the league, he had he's he been hurt most of the season because I watched both. I mean, not most of the season, most of the series. I watched both of those games, man. And every time Allen, Grayson, Grayson Allen went down, it was it was wrapped. Like they couldn't get the ball rolling, they couldn't get no movement in the ball, they threes wasn't falling. In. Bill is the only one attacking the paint. Devin Booker is playing so timid, it doesn't make sense at all. And KD, he's being KD, but he's not being KD because he has two other stars he has to dish the ball to, man. KD, you got to hog, man. You have to hog. It's the only way you're winning the series because Devin Booker isn't showing up right now. Bill is trying his best, so he's kind of showing up right now, but he doesn't have the space he had in Washington to do what he's doing back there. Man, I don't know, bro. It, it, it's, it's like, it's so disappointing, man, to see Phoenix. Cause I think even though Phoenix was a six seed, I think so many people thought Phoenix was just going to win this series in five games. Nobody expected the Timberwolves to go up 2-0. Nobody expected that, bro. Even NBA analysts didn't expect that because it's Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal, and none of y'all are playing like y'all made. Y'all are selling that series. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think it is a bit of a surprise that the Timberwolves are up uh two nothing currently, but I don't think it's it's you know if Timberwolves beat the Suns, I don't, I don't think that's a, a a shocker or a surprise. Uh, the Timberwolves have been playing very very well. Um, they had everything, you know. People a couple of years ago thought the Timberwolves were crazy trying to get uh Rudy Gobert in a match with Cat because you know in the modern NBA you never really see two uh legit uh six eleven seven foot tall guys um being star players and coexisting with each other on court at the same time and uh give them credit the first season they didn't uh really gel well but this season the duo of cat and rudy gobert has really been gelling well it's been helping the defense a lot you've been taking the um post defensive pressure off the of cat which really wasn't his thing, but because Rudy's down there, he is able Cat is able to roam around and pick his spots. Um and Man's a great defensive player. Uh Jay Madans is a great defensive player. I was in Mike Conley is a great defensive player. So it's it's suffocated defense all uh sides of the court. And I think with the Suns, it's a very similar situation. So as I just explained with the Clippers, you got uh, a set of four guys, three guys that are all superstars that need the ball. Um, obviously KD is a guy that's, that's more, probably the most capable of playing off the ball, but you look at a guy like Devin Booker, who, who his whole career, he was the number one option, um, before, uh, well, after, uh, John Wall went down in Washington, Bradley Beal was the number one option. He had to share the ball with anybody for at least like four or five seasons. So that's, that's in his DNA is in Devin Booker's DNA. And then with KD, you put him in a situation where, He's um, – I'm not going to say he's the de facto facilitator because all three of the guys take turns trying to facilitate, and it just, it just doesn't work. It's not in any of their DNAs to for KD to facilitate or Booger to facilitate or uh, Bill to facilitate. Uh, Grace Allen does some of that, but you should want him to, you know, to be trying to you know spot up and get open shots because that's what he's been very great at this year. Um, his three-point shooting is his, his – uh, going to another level this season. So I just think it's it's too much confusion on the offensive side of the ball with your three uh, superstars, and it's just not gelling well. And then you got, on the other side, Minnesota Timberwolves team where everything is going well as far as the offense, and man's been killing it, uh, Cat has been killing it, and then on their defense, all uh, five guys on the starting lineup have just been killing it. And, um, Phoenix has, has definitely been feeling it. But um, I, was, I think the Timberwolves are going to take this home. Phoenix may get a, a game out. Nah. But what do you think? What would you say not to? I got, you I got think Phoenix, so? I, I, I got Phoenix still win the series, man. Because I, 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 I haven't seen – because we still have Kevin Durant, the greatest scorer of all time, respectively, respectively. We have Devin Booker, one of the most skilled shooting guards there are right now. And we have Bradley Beal. Another one of the most skilled shooting guards we have right now, and we haven't seen them put on the offensive like prowess yet. So when they put on, when they put on the show, when they finally gone put on the show, I believe they can get four games in a row. Bro. They can get four. In a row. Uh, I think it's gonna be tough because it's gonna 
for one, um, the Timberwolves are no slouches on offense. So you're you're not gonna be able to answer them with Phoenix uh uh defense because Phoenix defense is almost you know non existent. They have no answers for for uh anybody. What? I mean they got it and it was very well that last game. I mean, how many how many points he had? He probably had like under under like fifteen. Well, yeah, he he had, he had fifteen. But yeah, the first the first game he he killed them. You can't lie. Yeah, the sure, first game, sure. and man, yeah, killed they, it. They, they kept they kept trying to switch a slower, taller KD on him, which you can't do that. KD, you can't be getting cocky and trying to switch on him. When Booker was holding Edwards, he was stopping them. Like Booker was actually stopping Edwards. KD, you can't stop him. You're too slow. He's just gonna dance around and get a shot off. That's what he was doing the whole time. But one thing about uh, the Timberwolves offense is that they're able to um, get offense production from multiple guys. Phoenix, they have been able to figure out how to get uh, the good amount, a good amount of the appropriate amount of offense production from all the guys, and that's going to be a problem. It's going to be hard to get your offense clicking, and you know, well, theoretically, um, two more games because obviously Timberwolves are already up too old. So it's going to be hard to try to get your offense clicking in two games, especially when you have a coach like Frank Vogel, who's a defensive central coach. Um, you might want to get an offensive guy to uh, come in and coach. Obviously, I'm not advocating for anybody to get fired. I'm not that type of person. But, um, yeah, I, I just – the Timberwolves can't compete. I mean, the Suns can't compete with the Timberwolves on offense, and there's nothing they can really do on defense. What? You you've seen it in the they, first they, two they, games. They, they you've seen it in the first two games. No, no, they're competing on offense. They're getting out. They're not competing. Defended. They're not competing. They're getting out defended, defended, bro. They're, they're not competing on offense. They're getting they're out not competing defended. Also. They're getting out defended. Bro. If if they if they, they, they can't guard nobody, bro. They can't guard nobody. You got you got you got three or some of the greatest scores of all time, and they can only get their team to get ninety three points total. I think they all had almost twenty though. Well, in game two, KD had 18, Bill had 14, Booker had 20. You're not, you not winning them, that way. They almost all had 20. That's not winning this series. <laughs> That's not winning this series. If you're playing defense, it is. Somebody yes. else got to – we need we need 15 for somebody else. Nurse had, I think, what, 11? We need one more player to come in there and get 15, which was Grayson Allen, and he's been hurt half the series. If we had Grayson Allen, we would be uh, it would be one one. Well, my unbiased basketball opinion: <laughs> the Suns are not messing with the Tim Wolves offense right now, and there's nothing they can do on defense that can they uh, can keep them in competition uh, with the Tim Wolves right now. So another series is is obviously. Uh, being talked about a lot right now, and that is the Denver Nuggets versus the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, the Denver Nuggets are up 2 0 against the Lakers. Um, the Lakers are going back home uh, to crypto for the next two games. They've been trying to see um, what they can try to do. But what do you think about the series so far with the Nuggets and the Lakers? Sweet. Sweet. The Lakers are gone. The Lakers are the worst team in the playoffs right now. Oh, come on. Come on, bro. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. Yeah. They, they, they better than, like, three teams. I'm not going to say that. But, I mean, do you actually see them getting a game, though? Like, who sees the Lakers getting a game? I mean, LeBron, oh. fan, LeBron fans see the Lakers getting a game. But from the outside looking in, from a person that's not a fan of Jokic or LeBron, I like Jokic, I'm not a fan of him. Bro, I don't, I don't see LeBron. I don't, I don't see them getting the game. LeBron KD has been playing decently these last two games. D'Lo been playing came, great. Even D'Lo <laughs> came in and played decent the second game, and y'all yeah. still lost. Yeah. What do you expect to win the game? If, <laughs> if your your three best players go off and you still lose, and you still like, come on, bro, come on. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely tough. Uh, this is the Lakers have health. Lost to the Nuggets in the last 10 meetings that they have played each other. And you can imagine in all 10 of those meetings, you've had games where uh the the Nuggets were had it all, the Lakers didn't didn't have anything, 
you had games where the Lakers had it all and the Lakers didn't have anything. He had games where LeBron played well, didn't play well, AD played well, didn't play well, D'Lo played well, didn't play well, Jokic played well, Jokic didn't play well, uh, Murray played well, Murray didn't play well. And then after all that, the Lakers are still 10 and 0 versus the Lakers in their last 10 meetings. So, um, I don't know. It's 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 a situation that I, I don't think I've ever seen before in basketball or professional sports. Um obviously in, in, in football, being a, a former Packers fan, I could think of um uh, how the Packers always beat the Bears. Uh I can't remember last time that the Bears beat the Packers, but outside of that, I can't think of a a, a, a series in between two professional teams in which one team just cannot beat the other team and uh yeah it's it's something and uh especially in the second game the second game had to be in the game that the lakers had to get you know what i'm saying and um on the last offensive position for the lakers um lebron gets um kcp off of him KC, kcp trip and uh LeBron obviously decides to to uh, choke up a three. It misses, but and it leaves 13 seconds left for for Denver to to make a play. And obviously, um, Jamal Murray gets off the screen, um, steps back on AD in the in the far right corner and, and pulls up a, a fadeaway mid range shot on top of. Him. And it's just. <laughs> it's just crazy. Like I've never seen a situation in which in every single game outcome, um the Lakers uh, compete with the Nuggets for the first three quarters and then the fourth quarter. It just it just all falls apart every time. Every every single game that the Lakers and the Nuggets have played over the last two seasons looks completely the same. <laughs> and uh it's wild. Um, I don't know if the Lakers get a game. I don't. I don't. I don't really think that they can turn around a series, but it's definitely something to see that um, the Suns are struggling with KD. The Lakers are struggling with Le- with LeBron and AD, and uh, obviously Curry and the Warriors need to make us to the playoffs. So it's been a very interesting year for sure. Going to the East side. Of the playoff bracket, um, looking at the Celtics and the Heat, <laughs> the series is now tied one to one between the Celtics and the Heat. The Celtics took home um, first game at home, and the Heat um, beat the Celtics on their court um, tonight, Wednesday. What do you think about the series so far? Hey, this series is that instant, man, with no Jimmy Butler, and I think I heard Jimmy Butler was out for the whole series or whatever. I mean, yeah. with no with no Jimmy Butler to lose at, at home, man, Boston, you're not winning the finals, bro. Losing to the Heat without Jimmy Butler at home in the first round, man, I don't I don't see Boston winning the finals no more, bro. I don't I don't think they can beat I don't think they can beat Milwaukee or they can beat you know I, I just don't. I, don't, I mean, you, you can't you can't lose those games, man. You gotta sweep them. Like you, you got you gotta win four games in a row so you can get ready for the next round, man. When you playing a team without their best player and you lose at home, it's like if OKC would have lost tonight. Like you can't you can't you can't lose in those situations, man. I, Boston, man, I don't know. I'm scared. I'm scared for y'all. Um. I think Boston is a great team. Uh, you've seen examples of this during the regular season where they get uh, a little lackadaisical. But their their two top guns play very well. Uh, uh, Tatum dropped 28. Uh, Brown dropped 33. The supported cast just didn't show up. Um, and the supported cast for the Heat showed up. Uh, the Heat, for the Heat, offensive production was spread very well around. I think they had a good game plan. Um, a lot of pick and rolls. Um, Caleb Martin uh, went off. Isn't that Caleb? Was that Cody? Yeah, Caleb. Uh, <laughs> Caleb Martin uh, went off. He gave you 21. Uh, a hero chips in with 24. Band gets you 21. Supporting Cass uh, helped out a lot. Uh, Triple J dropped 14. Uh, Nikola Jovic dropped 11. So um, 
for the Heat this game, I just think they had a, a better offensive game plan, uh, well around that that everybody on the Heat was able to to put some points up. And for the Celtics, it was just the two top guns and nothing else. And uh, at the end of the day, is who puts the most points on the board. And I think the Heat was just able to do that tonight. But uh, for me, I think the Celtics uh, still win the series. I'm not. I'm not worried at all. Um, the Celtics are 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 a uh, extraordinarily talented team. Uh, people don't talk about it a lot, but the Celtics uh, stats this year as a team in, in many different categories. Uh, I saw they're in the top ten of like all time teams in a lot of different categories. So, um, talented team, and if they don't win this year, I don't know what else you could say about this. Um, core of, of Tatum and Brown because they've had so many you know, opportunities almost every single year they made the Eastern Conference Finals at least since um, what, like 2017 when they had IT and then they went 2018 uh, lost to LeBron um, they lost to the, in the bubble against the Heat um, obviously they went to the Finals and lost to the Warriors and it's just every single year they, they you see they made the Eastern Conference Finals. They made the Finals one time and they lost. So all the talent that they have this year with Drew Holiday, uh, Chris S. Porzingis, uh, Derek White, Al Horford still there. You have to win this season. You just have to. You just have to. You can't, you can't call Al Horford tender. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Anyway, so all the all the talent that you have on the Celtics this year and um, succeeding in so many different statistical categories, you can't, you just can't lose this season. I don't care who they meet in the East Conference Finals. I don't care who they meet in the finals. You just got to win. Or, and if you don't, it's going to be some serious questions that the uh, Celtics going to have to answer this all season. I don't know if you want to talk about this series, but the Cavs are leading the Magic uh, 2-0 in the uh, fourth and fifth uh, seed spot in the playoffs. Uh, is there anything you want to say about that? I actually, actually, I actually watched the second game. Um, I don't know why I watched the second game. It was horrible. <laughs> it was like, man, that was, that was hard to watch, man. It, I don't know, bro. It's like a like a like a Disney movie, like when you grow up, like it's kind of like you know. What I don't. You ever you ever like grew up and went back and watched the Disney movie? Like they like way worse when like you like older and understand movies and things. Oh, okay, I see what you're trying to say. Like that series is it's like more. Oh, and Donovan Mitchell is like he feel it like LeBron, like like it's like Donovan Mitchell. It's like Donovan Mitchell versus. Indiana, Indiana, no, they responded. You, know. you mean the magic, bro? No, 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 no the magic, the magic. Going to fan, two boys, three. Fan. I'm, I'm tripping, two boys, three. Uh, the whole E series, boy, that, that was just making me up. The magic have no absolute score except France and Paolo. Those are the only two guys I see getting after the scoring, and you know, both of them were pretty dead. In that second game, himself, friends, he got, he, I think he had ended off like 25, 26, which was a great game by him. But you know, you still losing it. You can't even, 19 put up 100 points. Like, who wants to watch this? So, I mean, they just need to, like, don't even get them no more TV time. You do Basically. realize they, you realize they haven't been on TV, right? <laughs> oh, they haven't? Oh, okay. They've been on NBA TV. I don't even, yeah, I don't, yeah. even if I wanted to watch the game, I can't watch the game. <laughs> Uh, it's crazy. I'll be watching a little bootleg app, which you know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not. I'm not finna do uh, piracy to watch the cap. <laughs> magic. I'm just saying. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, Cavs leading the Magic two on their series. Go ahead and get into the next series. The Milwaukee Bucks and the Pacers. Their series is currently tied one to one. Um, the Bucks uh, secured their home court the first game. Uh, Beating the Pacers and the Pacers came back and beat the Bucks on um on their home court in the five serve form. Um, what do you think about the series so far with the Bucks and Pacers being tied up? Um, that nigga 
damn it, let me just take him breaks in between half. I mean, like he going to sleep half time or something. He joined he joined in the first half. The nigga I, I ain't finna say no name, but you know, he horrible in the second half. He just throwing shots up. He like playing elimination games, man. He just I don't know. It's like he just like come back discombobulated at the halftime or something. Like something just happened to him or something. But you know, um, Dermot Lilly has been solid in the series, even after saying all that. You know, thirty points I think in both both first halves, which is you know very great. I mean, that's somebody's average, and you you scoring that in the first half. But you know, second half you got to keep going, and that's why Indiana capitalized in the second half of the second game. You just ran out of gas, man. And without Giannis, you can't run out of gas. Like you got to be that guy both halves. Yeah. Um. In the first game, uh, the, the Bucks just blew the Pacers out the water. I don't really think the Pacers are ready. I think the Pacers are probably a little overconfident. Um. Obviously, Dame dropped thirty something, and uh, the Pacers really just didn't have any answer. Um, by reporters played very well. Um, uh, Lopez played very well, and uh, Pacers just didn't have an answer in the first game. Now, the second game, the Pacers came out with a little bit more aggression. Pascal Siakam played, you know, the game of his life. Um, he dropped 37, which is his uh, career playoff high, uh, 37 points, 11 rebounds, um, leading the way for the Pacers. Uh, Miles Turner uh, came in with 22 points. Uh, Nimhard came in with 20 points. Halliburton uh, dropped, <coughs> excuse me, dropped 12 and 12. And uh, I think he's going to be the key to this series. I think this series, well, obviously, if Giannis on return, but I think the key to this series is probably going to be Halliburton. I think it's going to be what Halliburton can do um, for the Pacers. Because, I mean, Dame still played well for the Bucks. He dropped 34 points uh, in the second game. Lopez came behind him with 22. But, um, yeah, I, I think Halliburton is going to be the key. Halliburton really hasn't been the same since the first half of the season where he had the um, – what what injury did he have? Was it a hamstring or something? You remember? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it's more like a groin. It was some leg, though. I know yeah, I know, yeah, I know it's something more body. But, yeah, he just really, just really hasn't been the same. And I know naturally he's not really a scorer, but that's how he broke out this season, being, you know – a, a a uh, high octane scorer and a great facilitator. Right now, he's just a great facilitator, and I think if the Pacers wants to win um, this series against the Bucks, like they've been beating the Bucks all season, Halliburton's going to have to be a scorer and a facilitator. And right now, he's just being a facilitator. Um, I'm very disappointed with Chris Middleton. Uh, Chris Middleton uh, really has been the same since they won the championship in 2021. Um, Middle said he he came with you no know, fifteen, but man, I remember in the playoffs, I Middleton. He, uh, I, I think he um he got he got he got shaken up. He got he got a little hurt. No, no, yeah, I know he been he's been you know in and out of injuries ever since uh twenty twenty one. No, they they walked him to the back. They walked him to the back. Like yeah, I know, but I'm, yeah, I know, but I'm saying like I just need more production from him. You know what I'm saying? Like I know he's been he's been hurt. He he got shook up last uh game, but it's just. We just need more, you know. Chris Middleton was he was a two time all star, three time all star when he was you know at the top of his game. I know he, I know he, he went back to back in um 18 and night, no 19 and 20. Be, it, it might just be two, it might just be two. yeah. It might, it, I don't know, yeah. I know, I know back to back too. I know possibly could have got a third one because they won a championship of 21, but um, yeah. I mean, Chris Middleton, he used to be you know, a very uh solid player give you you know 30 or, or 25 or you know games like that in the playoffs being the um the robin to to Giannis and yeah um for me to be honest this return this series I think the key for the Pacers would be Halliburton and the key for the Bucks would be Middleton. Uh I think Dane is solidified himself. I think he's gonna come out and drop 30 every game. Now, and um, uh, it'd be interesting. He 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 got to bring. He got to do something in the second half, man. He got to close those games out. He got to. He's, he's I mean, yeah, to. but 
I mean, you dropped thirty four. I mean, you gotta you gotta have some from somebody else. You need you need some type of zero in the second half. You gotta have something for somebody else, bro. Um, Austin Lopez, the 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 veteran, gives you twenty two, but you gotta have somebody to come along with the ride with you, especially Giannis uh, not being there. The last series to get into, we got the New York Knicks versus the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, the Knicks are 2 0 on Sixers, um, securing their home court with the first two uh, wins of this series in Madison Square Garden. Um, what do you think about the series so far between the Knicks and the 76ers? Uh, I hate to call it because it's they going back. They going back to Philly. I mean, they going to Philly. Knicks might get sweep here, man. I mean, the Knicks just seem like so much more of a complete team. I mean, you got okay on the other side. You do got Joel. You do got Maxi. You got Tobias Harris. But when you look past that, I mean, who who you got? Who, who are you worried about? Past like them three players, right? and they have done a good job with guard Tobias Harris. Maxie has been doing decent, but I don't think he's even getting his season average right now. Um, and B has been playing okay, but he's not playing like an uh, MVP candidate, which he would be if he played enough games. I mean, the Knicks is like they throwing him out the water. I mean, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, them two guys, I mean, they were role players on the team they just came from. And I seem like they going to be all-star next year. Like, hmm. I don't know what's going on, bro. I mean, I had I had New York with Randall going to the finals. But without Randall, it seems like they got even better. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, New York might be that sneaky team to beat Boston. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a very interesting series. Um, uh, the, the second game was, was more closer than the first game. I think the 76 was really needed that second game, just like how the uh, the Lakers really needed that second game against the, the Nuggets. And um I mean basically the same thing at the end that the Knicks um secured in, in the final minutes. And um I mean B dropped 34 and 10, you know, hobble. I mean, you can see every time he walked down the court, he was, you know, hobbling. Um Every time he went to the to the sideline, he had people coming to massage his leg, and I mean, you you can tell that he's in a lot of a lot of pain right now. He dropped thirty four and ten. Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the rebounding numbers are are uh, ridiculous. The Knicks are are uh, clearing the good glass uh, way more than the Seventy Sixers, and uh, rebounding wins rings. That, that's the saying. And uh, you're seeing that in, in this series so far. Um, Maxi came out the second game, dropped 35, um, 10 and 9, almost a triple double. Um, and then, and yeah, like you alluded to, the Knicks have been playing lights out. Uh, Brunson looking like an MVP candidate uh, all season. Uh, DiVincenzo and, and Josh Hart, they've been playing very well. The Nova Knicks. Um, Ananobi been chipping in. He was a good addition. Uh, Hardenstein's been looking really good against OB, probably uh, a lot dealing because of, you know, Embiid is, is hurt right now. So, yeah, I, I think the Knicks is going to take the, the series home. Maybe the 76 can get a game out. Uh, I think the the, uh, the series stops at five games, maybe six, but the Knicks. I definitely feel like it's going to be able to take this series home. Um, for me, I just, I've been on the record in past episodes saying that they need to sit and be down because you're not winning the championship this year. You just you just not. So I don't I don't well, you know, if he says he wants to play, you say he's good, he wants to play. Obviously, you you know want him to play, but he's a star player. You want to keep him happy. But I just don't see what the, the 76ers are getting out of NB playing because you're not going nowhere. You you going you going nowhere slower. Yeah, <laughs> instead of, instead of going nowhere series. faster, you're going nowhere slower. He said in the series, man. NB? 
he he too timid, bro. He too timid. He not he 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 got guys like heart on him, even Jinse on him. You got to go to the paint, man. Like he's he's too timid. I said that in the playing game. I said that when he the little games he was playing when the season when he came back or whatever. He's too timid. You cannot be that timid, man. He's too timid. I mean, he, he's been giving you the offense production, obviously on uh, defense. He's been struggling. He's been trying to, you know, focus more on the, on the offensive side of the ball. But yeah, I mean, he's giving what, what he can give you. Um, obviously, Tobias Harris isn't isn't coming along in the thing. Uh, Nicholas Batum had a game of his life in a play in game, so you know he don't have nothing else uh, for you for the rest of the season. So. Um, Buddy Hill has been very, very disappointing. There's no reason why Buddy Hill should only be having two points in a playoff game. Um, there's no reason why Kyle Larry should have more points than Buddy Hill. Um, Kayla Oubre has been disappointing so far. So, um, yeah. They, it's, it's, yeah, they, they, very deep. <laughs> they, they got some names, but they got a bunch of guys that's not showing up. So, um, and everybody for the Knicks are showing up. So, yeah, 76ers, as I said, they're going, uh, they're going home. I mean, they're going nowhere slow <laughs> instead of going nowhere fast. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the, uh, the playoffs right now. But get into some few other news. Um, Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson has been traded to Denver. Um, the New York Jets have traded – uh, QB Zach Wilson and a 2024 at seventh round pick to the Broncos in exchange for a 2024 at sixth round pick. Um, Wilson had a passer rating of 73.2 with uh, 6,293 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 25 interceptions in 34 games in his career for the Jets. What do you think about this move um, for Denver? Okay, as a Broncos fan, got to throw that out there. I mean, I used to like Zach Wilson, but you know, what I'm saying this right here. He 23 touchdowns, 25 interceptions is insane. How do you throw more interceptions and touchdowns? But you know, I believe in Denver. I believe what they're thinking in Denver is what, because I'm a Denver fan, so I'm, 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 I'm trying to see what they're thinking. What they're thinking is we throw the ball like we don't throw the ball as much in Denver. So I mean, when you put him on Denver, I mean we we. we, we we run the ball a lot. Well, not a lot, but we run the ball more than the average team. He doesn't have to throw as many passes as he threw on the Jets because I don't think the Jets had a decent running back. So you know, he had to throw it. He had to throw it a decent amount. Yeah, they got a running back. Who the um? I can't think of his name right there, but Jets got a running back. Jets got a running back. He wasn't even playing. Oh, Brees Hall. Brees Hall. Yeah. I mean, but, but but was he playing like when Brees yeah, was like he wasn't in the game as much. Like he probably played like five games last season. Yeah, he may have, or may have not been hurt. I I stopped keeping up with the Jets after uh uh Rogers got hurt. Exactly. So I mean we you I mean he don't have too many people to pass to, so I'm expecting the um Broncos to go with a heavy run game this season. Okay, uh, no, Bruce Bruce Hall, he played um 17 games and um, right, yeah, got a thousand yards, five touchdowns. But, um, I mean, just looking at it, um, I, I see the situation in in um, uh, Denver similar to the situation he just leaving from in New York because New York had skilled positions. They got Gary Wilson, they got uh, Brees Hall, they got um, other guys, and um, well, I'll see the Denver lost Jerry Judy, but they still got Cortland Sutton. Um, um, the Jets offensive line, I'll see shit so far. The Broncos offensive line is so far. So I don't know what the uh, Broncos say they get out of this trade. Uh, I think they just said, you know, let's just mm-hmm. get. Hmm. I mean, we can give him a chance. He's a young guy, and we're putting him in an offense where he doesn't have to throw the ball all around us. Like, he doesn't have to be Patrick Mahomes. He's a young guy, bro. We're giving a young guy a chance. He's not he, – well, he's like, what, 27? How, how, many, how, many, how many chances would he have had on this? I mean, I only knew him from the Jets. 
So I ain't gonna well, say it. That's, that's that's three chances. He had two chances <laughs> as, as the franchise quarterback, and then he had uh the third year he's supposed to be on the study for Aaron Rodgers and he got hurt, so he got put into a fire again and got burned. So he had three chances. <laughs> And after a while, after after a person show you who they are for so long, you kind of gotta believe them. So <laughs> I don't Justin think he's got a job. Justin Fields is, is way better than uh uh Zach Wilson. You don't, you, you don't know that yet. You don't know that yet. You don't know that yet. Justin Fields has been has, has had a much yeah, better career was. so far with the with the Bears. Only thing probably with the Bears was they didn't give him a lot of uh, uh, help offensively. They just got DJ Moore last year, and then they put him behind a very so far offensive line. They had a very bad offensive coordinator that didn't know how to use him uh, correctly. So he was put in a very bad situation. Is that the not the situation? No, he I bro, he had pieces. Me. He had Zach. If Zach Wilson wanted the Jets to be good, Zach Wilson could have made the, the Jets. The man had one receiver before Rodgers came. And Rogers brung, he brung a you know a little load with him or whatever. He didn't have anything, bro. Like <laughs> then he had the horrible offensive line. Like, bro, like, come on. I believe both of those guys are gonna thrive next year, though. That's just me. Anyways, yeah. Um and this is probably one of the worst QB rooms I've ever seen. Zach Wilson. Bitch. Jerry Stidham and Ben DiNucci. The Commanders, bro. You ever heard of the Commanders? I don't. I don't know Sam how uh, worse any of these guys, bro. I think Sam how better than all these. I think Sam how better than all these people. <laughs> so you do you really think the? Giants, I think I, I think Sam. I, I think I think Daniel Jones better than Zach Wilson. Daniel Jones the, the, won a, a playoff game. The the Vikings when Kirk Cousins went down. I I think uh, uh what's the kid name uh. Uh, the uh, the pastor not. I think I think he better than no, Zach Wilson. No way. <laughs> I think the pastor not better than Zach Wilson. So you really call him a, a, a four game wonder better than Zach Wilson? I, I think Josh Dobbs better than Zach Wilson. I, I've seen enough of Zach Wilson for three years to know that he is not an NFL starting quarterback. Um, I, this, yes. That's just it. We're gonna research for this clip. We we're gonna resurface this clip. Um, and I have no issue with that. <laughs> Getting into the next topic, um, Reggie Bush, um, the NCAA and the Heisman Trust uh, announced on Wednesday that college football and USC Trojans legend Reggie Bush will have his Heisman Trophy returned to him. Uh, Bush had a 2005 Heisman Trophy taken away from him in 2010 after it was found that Bush and his family received money and gifts while he was at USC. Bush rushed for 1,740 1, yards and 16 touchdowns by averaging 8.7 yards per carry in his Heisman season. Um, combined that with returning, he had 2,890 all-purpose yards his highest in a year. Um, this is uh, big news in, in the sports world and the football world. What do you think about uh, the news of Reggie Bush getting his highest in back? I mean, it's great. I mean, college college sports and NIL, I mean, all that has been taking a good turn. And, you know, this will, this will result of being able to get money through college now. Um, Getting his Heisman back, man. I mean, that's great. He said he cried about it. I mean, that's probably a very emotional moment because you know you're getting back something that was truly yours and you earned that. And he was one of the best backs to ever come through college. So I mean, him not having this award for that is like it's very crazy, man. You know, you know, I feel happy for that guy, man. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously he he didn't deserve having his his Heisman. Um. Taken away. I mean, it's what are you talking about? I mean, I mean, I mean the, but think about think about how many people we don't know receive money and gifts and they won Heisman's. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, anyways, he didn't deserve having his Heisman taken away. Um, 
he had one of the, the one of the greatest uh, college runs of all time. He's probably uh, I know we talked about it oh, way earlier uh, in episodes. Uh, he was like top ten and in, in most influential uh, college athletes of all time, uh, no matter the sport. So I mean, the Reggie Bush effect was just crazy. Uh, obviously, he didn't have that amazing of a of an NFL career. Um, he was never, you know, Pro Bowl, All Pro, you know, award winner during uh, his NFL career. But he had a solid NFL career. I want to say he played for about ten years. So, um, yeah, I mean, just but just focusing on the Heisman. Uh, I'm very glad he had his Heisman uh, brought back to him. Um, I'm glad that uh, Johnny Manziel and, and some of the other guys, you know, spoke up for him. And um, yeah, I mean, just. Happy. This is uh, great for the culture that Reggie Bush uh, has his highest from there. Looking at um, a recent 2024 anonymous NBA player poll, um, the Athletic recently announced their 2024 anonymous NBA player poll. Players like Rudy Gobert were voted for most overrated. Uh, Wimby was voted for best defender. Jalen Williams uh, and Derek White tied for most underrated player and Jokic was voted MVP by the players. Um but the uh the award or the designation they got people talking was the vote for GOAT. Um Jordan finished uh number one uh in the player poll with 45.9 percent of the vote and LeBron finished a close second with 42.1 percent um Kobe was a distant number three at 9.8. Um, but for comparison, um, in the 2023 poll, Jordan was 58.3% and LeBron had 33. And then even way back to 2019, Michael Jordan had a 73% share of the vote and LeBron had 11.9. So what do you think about um, the NBA players uh, this year voting LeBron the GOAT um, so close to proximity to Jordan. LeBron is the goal. Um, I mean, how did Kobe get nine percent over Kareem? I do Jamal. Kobe got nine percent over Magic Johnson over Larry Bird. Kobe got nine percent. You know, it's Kobe. He died. Everybody loves him. It's, it's that that he. I mean, Kobe. I mean, it, 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 he's not a ball hole. But Kobe. The, anyways, Kobe always gets around seven to nine percent. So. For sure, because I mean, it, it's, it's guys that love Kobe. I mean, it's nothing wrong with loving Kobe because I love Kobe. Man. I mean, NBA, NBA players always going to vote, you know, a guard or a wing. They're not fit to vote for Kareem or Bill Russell because, <laughs> for one, um, they uh, idolize players that they watched growing up. Obviously, none of them watched Kareem or or Bill Russell or Magic or uh, Larry or anybody like that. So they're going to vote for LeBron. <laughs> Jordan and Kobe because most likely they um, watched them play or you know close to age to understand who they who they were uh, or was. So um, yeah, with, with six guys better than Kobe and he getting nine percent, just kind of ludicrous to me. I mean, but it is what it is. I mean, cause like it's just a popularity post, you know, because it's NBA players and they don't really analyze the game as much as we do. And right. we're not even real analyzers. So, I mean, <laughs> Who is a real analyzer? It's sports. And, Nobody's and, a real analyzer. It's, 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 so. I mean, yeah, yeah but... You're right. Um, so, you know, I mean, it is dead. I mean, I think LeBron should have had more than him because when you, when you think about it, too many of them wasn't... They were like five, six years old when Jordan was in his prime. Yeah, but you know you got the 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 dads and the uncles and the, the big brothers, big cousins that you know probably rave about Jordan all day. And then um, I know the documentary swayed a lot of people. So um, I mean, and, and there's no problem with with people thinking uh, Jordan the goat. I mean, it's it's just a fun debate. Um, it's really just your preference. Um, people who think Kobe is the goat is really just they Kobe fans. They just you know, they just really love Kobe. So, in their opinion, Kobe is their GOAT. There's people that think Paul George is the GOAT. Uh, there's people that think uh, Kyrie is the GOAT. There's people that think KD is the GOAT. So, I mean, it's really, so it's really just uh, 
your preference, really. There's never going to be a right or wrong answer to the goal. For sure. <laughs> so, hey, it's, it's uh, whatever. Well, yeah, I think that's that's uh, it for this episode. Uh, this is episode 10 of the Fan Take. I'm sure we got another 10 up, uh, left with us. So, I'm Cam. That's Tweety. And we'll see you next time. Okay, see, I'm in the thunder. I be feeling like I'm cheating. Switch up like